So I'm going to talk about a, a subject that I've been avoiding for probably the past 20 years, and that is pulse duration modulation and PDM AM transmitters. Now, there's been a lot of work done over 25 or 30 years, uh, principally by people like WA1QIX, uh, former KA1SI, Steve Cloutier, and others. Um, there's been many uh, radios and uh, reference designs that have been uh, talked about, uh, published in uh, magazines like QEX and others. And uh, I'd like to take a first principles approach and also like to make a small, very simple PDM transmitter, maybe putting out 10 or 20 watts, something like that. I'm going to base this on my knowledge from my solid state pulse circuits class that I took back in 1978 at RIT. And uh, I remember this class because it went over all the classes of logic gates made with transistors, RTL, TTL, DTL, and so on. And it introduced me to CMOS. And of course, once we got CMOS, we never looked back. It was kind of uh, understood that people that used TTL in the late 20th century uh, were kind of old-fashioned, and most, uh, most of the world had moved to CMOS by that time. So in the book, we have a nice section on uh, different types of digital modulation. So let's take a look. Here's a section on PDM modulation and demodulation. We find out that to make PDM, all you need is a ramp wave and a modulating signal. And uh, you can produce this PDM output very nicely with a very simple comparator circuit. And what you see is a discrete comparator front end that's put, a, put in the front of an ordinary op amp uh, to produce the PDM modulator. So using this information that I learned from this book, for my final project in the class, I produced a light beam uh, communicator based on two infrared devices, an infrared LED and an infrared photodiode. And I was able to use two of those handheld flashlights, one for the transmitter, one for the receiver, and the kid across the room could hear me talking into the microphone as I was communicating with PDM across the classroom. So this is 1978. So let's take some of those principles and put them together and see if we can build using simple chips and maybe uh, common transistors, a little PDM rig, and maybe it comprises something like this with some tuned circuits, and we will have our PDM rig. So I hope you enjoyed this introductory video, part one, PDM AM transmitters. So time to start a new project. This time it's going to be a solid state project. And I would like to use a, uh, a bunch of parts from an old ATX power supply as the foundation for the project. Here's one that's been taken apart. Um, this is going to be a pulse duration modulated AM transmitter, a PDM rig, a first principles PDM rig, but we're going to take a shortcut with the modulator. Uh, that is, we're going to be using the TL494 power supply supervisor pulse width modulation IC. Now this particular IC came out in dip form. Here's one of them on an old AT power supply. This is the IC here, the 494. Take any AT power supply and the early ATX power supplies that are you know, usually 300 watts or so, and you're likely going to find this chip in there. We're going to base it on that. This is such a such an ubiquitous chip that uh, they actually have some little circuits that they've built on, on board, so you can play with them, mostly to do light-emitting diode type work where you're you know, you want to light up the diodes efficiently using pulse width modulation. Um, 
robotics, uh, motor control, anything that needs an efficient DC controllable source where you don't want to waste a lot of power, you're going to use pulse width modulation. So I bought a couple of these little evaluation boards, demo boards, whatever you want to call them, and they have the SOIC version of the chip on them. Uh, this will be the foundation for the for the project. So we'll be putting audio in here and producing a drive for some type of solid state device that will be the modulator. Now, on the ATX supplies, you will also usually find a bank of MOSFETs. So if we look in here, we can see some MOSFETs down in there. I'm going to try to use some of those for the project. So I'm going to get as much as I can right off this old ATX power supply and see if we can make a small transmitter AM using PDM type technology. So here's an old power supply, I think from a UPS. One of those uh, UPSs that, uh, you know, they go bad, the batteries go dead, and you take them apart, and there's some good parts in there. Besides those MOSFETs that I can see, I like that heat sink. I think I'm going to use that for the simple PDM rig. So I have the uh, the TL494 applications board. Bought a pair of these application boards. I just wanted to fire it up. I've only got about 9 volts on it, but that seems to be running it okay. I have it set for around 79 kilohertz. And I have... Uh, a nice square wave output at 79 kilohertz. So this is just to uh, play with the device. Let me turn down the old military radio net in the background. Okay, so uh, one potentiometer adjusts the duty cycle. So if I get on there, you can change the duty cycle. Let's look at the scope. And I'm just going to fool with the duty cycle. Okay. And the other potentiometer adjusts the frequency. So duty cycle, frequency. There's not much to it. And uh, just wanted to get my feet wet with the chip. So that's the idea here. And I'm immediately going to go to a circuit board. I've removed a TL-494 from an old ATX power supply board simply by, uh, you know, here's one here. All you do is just hit the back with the heat gun and the chip simply falls out. Okay, so they're easy to recover. Almost every AT power supply and early ATX power supply uses this chip. There are some other chips, but this is by far the most popular early chip on these old junk power supplies. So that's what we're going to be using as our pulse width modulator in our PDM rig. So some more ideas for the TL-494. You know, I, I wiggled the potentiometer and I was easily able to get it down to 400 hertz. Um, so we're looking at a 400 hertz square wave now. Now, this is a very nice push-pull type driver. It can drive a, you know, a pair of MOSFETs to produce a beautiful 400 hertz uh, power supply for some military radio you might be doing. Uh, it can be used to, to produce a 50 or a 60 hertz AC inverter. Um, you know, it, it, it can be used to develop negative voltages, positive voltages, AC voltages. Uh, it's a very interesting little chip, and uh, even though I'm just using it as a pulse width modulator, also known as pulse duration modulation, they're identical terms, but we have two terms that we use interchangeably. So PWM essentially is PDM.
Anyway, that's uh, just showing off the little evaluation board. They're very cheap. It's a chip, a few parts, a couple potentiometers. The most expensive parts being the potentiometers and the chip itself. So let's move on to the modulator design itself. Like all uh, projects uh, here on the Microwave One channel, we usually start with questions rather than answers on circuits. And here's the question. This is something that I found on, on the internet. It appears to be a pulse width modulation rig, a 5 watt rig. It uses the TL494. I've put the pinout up to the left. And uh, this caused some interest. So I'm going to see if I can make something like this and uh, substitute parts, of course for parts we can get our hands on. It may look quite different by the time I'm done with this uh, video series. But we're going to have a PDM rig, an exciter if you want. I'm going to try to get 10 or 20 watts out rather than 5. Let's go for a little more power. And uh, I'm going to build the bulk of it on this uh, perf board type prototyping board. And I've already got some parts that I'm thinking about here. They aren't soldered in yet. I have the 494 pulse width modulator. I have a small 8-pin uh, dip that's going to be the microphone amplifier. I've got uh, sort of the idea of some type of crystal that's being divided down or perhaps uh, being buffered to drive the, uh, the RF section up here. And then, of course, we'll have an output section with MOSFETs on something like this. And, of course, one of the MOSFETs will be the modulator, and one of the MOSFETs will be the transmit uh, final. So this is the kickoff of a new project. It's a low-power PDM rig. So that's going to wrap up part one on pulse duration modulation, often called pulse width modulation. Remember that just about every computer power supply, every UPS, every charger, every uh, plug-in charger for your phone, just about everything you can think of that has to have high efficiency power conversion uses pulse duration modulation in some way. So we're going to use it, of course, to make an AM modulator, a high-efficiency way of producing good quality AM.